before a single gram of uranium-235 was isolated, there was already a full atomic bomb design. In the last video, I introduced you to the work of Rudolf Piles and Otto Frisch, who discovered that one kilogram was enough for a nuclear chain reaction. In this video, I will show you the key follow-up calculations that they used to demonstrate that this chain reaction would in fact produce a colossal explosion. The goal of this video is to prove that nuclear fission can produce an explosion. For this, we have to estimate the energy released by the fission of one kilogram of uranium-235, and also we have to estimate the time that it takes for this reaction. As a bonus, we will get the genesis of the implosion design. If you are unfamiliar with the names of Frisch and Pyrels, or terms like cross-section and mean three path, I highly recommend that you first watch the video about critical mass. After solving the neutron diffusion equation, Frisch and Piles calculated the criticality conditions for a sphere of pure uranium-235 and found that one kilogram could produce a self-sustaining fission chain reaction. But will this explode? A very important concept in explosion physics is that to generate a blast wave, you need two things. You have to release a lot of energy and release it fast. Take a bonfire. It is a reasonable amount of chemical energy, but released very slowly. It can be a useful or destructive heat source, but a flame is not an explosion. Take a small amount of chemical energy, release quickly, and you get fireworks. Or ignite a chemical compound rich in fuel and oxygen within their molecular makeup, and it will produce a very fast release of chemical energy. This is called a high explosive, TNT being a well-known example. So far, Piles and Frisch have only discovered a way to release energy from the atomic nucleus. The first question to be answered is, how much energy would the fission of one kilogram of uranium-235 release? Let's suppose perfect efficiency, so that the neutrons split all the nuclei. Each nuclear fission releases 170 million electron volts. Here it is important to clarify a very common misconception. Many people believe that if you split one nucleus of uranium or plutonium, you get an explosion, but this is incorrect. 170 million electron volts is huge compared to the energy release per molecule in a chemical reaction. However, it is equivalent to 2.72 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. This is a very small amount of energy. It is so small that it would barely move a speck of dust. The key for more energy is the chain reaction and the exponential growth of neutrons that split more and more uranium nuclei. And in a single kilogram of uranium-235, there are a lot of nuclei. How many? That's easy to estimate. We just need to multiply the mass, one kilogram, by Avogadro's number and divide it by the molar mass which for uranium-235 is 235 grams per mole, because it contains 235 particles, 92 protons, and 143 neutrons. Plugging all the values, we get a total of 2.56 times 10 to the 24 nuclei. If we split all these nuclei, then we can go to an actual explosion. More precisely, the complete fission of one kilogram of uranium-235 would release almost 70 terajoules. This is equivalent to 17 million kilograms of TNT, or 17 kilotons. This is a lot of energy. Now we move to the second crucial question. How fast is this energy released? In a supercritical mass of uranium or plutonium, the number of neutrons grows exponentially as e to the t over tau. This result comes from the solution of the neutron diffusion equation. Tau is a characteristic time between fissions that we will find in a minute. To find the time that it takes to fission all the uranium nuclei, we take this expression describing the neutron multiplication equated to the number of nuclei in one kilogram of uranium-235 that we found earlier, and then solve for t. After some minor algebra, we get this expression, for which we need to find the characteristic time tau. Neutrons from fission fly at a speed close to 10 to the 9 centimeters per second. 
This speed can be written as the average distance that a neutron moves before splitting another uranium nucleus divided by the characteristic time. Here we recognize the numerator as the fission mean free path and the denominator as tau. Solving for tau, we find it to be the fission mean free path lambda sub f divided by the neutron speed. Using modern values, this is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds, or almost 17 nanoseconds. Now we can plug tau in the equation found earlier for the time that it takes to fission all the uranium. If we get the reaction started by a single neutron, then N0 is equal to 1. Plugging all the values, we get almost a microsecond. So yes, the full chain reaction is very, very fast. In summary, Pyles and Frisch made a disturbing discovery that a nuclear chain reaction was possible with a small amount of uranium, but also that a single kilogram of uranium-235 would release around 17 kilotons, a vast amount of energy in about a millionth of a second. These are all the ingredients for a very destructive explosion. For comparison, one of the standard general purpose bombs used during World War II had a blast yield equivalent to around 120 kilograms of TNT. A single B-29 bomber could carry 40 of such bombs. In contrast, the explosive energy of the tiny bomb that Pyers and Fritsch designed on the blackboard would be equivalent to more than 3,500 fully loaded B-29s. This realization must have been frightening. Pyles and Frisch wrote two brief documents explaining their findings. Today, they are known as the frisch pyles Memorandum. One part is a general overview of the destruction that the bomb would produce, including blast damage. They also introduced the concept of radioactive fallout. The other part is an early design of the first nuclear bomb. It describes their calculation of the critical mass, the energy release, the reaction timescales, the steps to purify uranium, and even the assembly of two subcritical parts to detonate the bomb. This is the origin of the gun-type design used in Little Boy. One of the most important observations on the memorandum turned out to be crucial for solving the Great Plutonium Crisis during the Manhattan Project some years later. It can be easily understood like this. The critical mass is the product of the uranium density and volume, which is proportional to the radius to the third power. From the neutron diffusion equation, Frisch and Piles found the critical radius to be proportional to the mean free path. F here just represents a factor. In their case, they found F to be equal to 0.8. But the important part is that the critical radius is proportional to the mean free path, which is in turn proportional to the inverse of the uranium density. Plugging all these definitions, they realize that the critical mass is inversely proportional to the square of the uranium density. This means that a subcritical amount of uranium could reach criticality if it's strongly compressed. This result is the genesis of the implosion design used for the plutonium bombs at the Trinity Test and Fatman. Frisch was living at the house of the Pyers family, where they secretly discussed their discovery. In an interview, Piles shared that they were quite paranoid in those days, and at the university they only talk about their side project in a locked room. One early spring day, while typing and discussing the wording of the now historic memorandum, with a blackboard covered in their secret equations, they turned around and saw the silhouette of a man in the window. They froze, but then realized that it was just a lab technician taking care of some tomatoes planted along the wall, and he was paying no attention to them. Pyers and Frisch were really ahead of their time with their design and understanding of nuclear fission, chain reactions, and bomb physics. They have done all this years before the Manhattan Project even began. The next step was to find a reliable way to communicate their findings while keeping it top secret. <laughs>